Hi, welcome to Women's Health. I am Jean Schumacher, co-founder of the Pregnancy Advantage, where we help women to get their bodies pregnant ready. Or if you're having trouble conceiving, especially before that in vitro rabbit hole, <laughs> don't want to go down there. Anyway, today's topic is a big one, and it's how to minimize the risk of breast cancer. And my partner today is Dr. Deborah Shapiro, who is a board-certified OBGYN. So, Doc, are you ready to jump into this, especially this being Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. We're going to continue our conversation. If any of you were with us last week, we started talking about breast cancer prevention. I'm just going to zoom back through a few of those and just add what we didn't get to last time, which was alcohol, which is a big topic. And I know that I certainly know many, many women, even women who have gone through breast cancer treatments who are still indulging in alcohol and, uh, and wine, especially in white wine, which is of no use whatsoever. So I just wanted to throw this out there and put some information out there for people so they can really think about what might be the healthiest thing to do. So when we think about breast cancer, it is the second most common cancer in women after skin cancer. A lifetime risk is one in eight. Over 40,000 women die annually from breast cancer. Breast cancer detection isn't all that great for women who are of low risk. You know, we, we do mammograms, but you know, there's a lot of controversy about whether mammograms actually save lives. There's a lot of overdiagnosis and overtreatment. And, and really when talk, people talk about early detection, but actually breast cancer starts probably 10 or 20 years even before anything is detected. So uh, we're really, what's more important is prevention. So let's talk about prevention. There are four things that you can do. And one is to eat a plant-based diet. So eat a healthy plant-based diet, a diet centered around whole plant foods. And last week we did talk about some foods that were particularly helpful, such as ground flax, which contain the lignans that reduce your estrogen levels in your blood, the cruciferous vegetables, sulforaphane, and how important that is, mushrooms, green tea, turmeric, things like that. Very, very important. Maintain a healthy weight. And of course, that's not so difficult if you're on a whole food plant-based diet, right? Because that's because of the calorie density with that kind of a diet and not using extra oils, which are, you know, 4,000 calories a pound, as opposed to fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which are all less than or equal to 600 calories a pound. So you can eat to your heart's content, eat as much as you want, and still just be filling your body with healthy food that's gonna help you to maintain your healthy weight because fat cells make estrogen. Exercise, so daily moderate exercise. Really, it's so important to exercise, to move your body. That is what your body is made for. That's why you have muscles. My father used to say, get off, you know, if you don't use your legs, they're gonna fall off. And he was right, you know, that's, osteoporosis is not a disease of calcium deficiency. Wait, wait, they're gonna fall off, wait. Do you remember, do you remember Jack LaLanne? We're the yeah. same age, right? Six, yeah, so, I remember, remember Jack, exactly. Right, so my father was a big fan, and he, you know he, you know he had a we had a chin up bar in his closet, and I mean he was really interested in, interested in all that stuff. And there was also those navy exercises that were popular at the time. So, anyway, yeah, he would see me watching. Talked about this last week, watching Lost in Space after school, you know, to chill, and because I was too young to drink wine, right? So <laughs> I was chilling with Lost in Space, and my father would come in and see me lying on the couch. Yeah, but fall <laughs> off. Really? He said, if you don't use, and he was a doctor, he said, if you don't use your legs, they're going to fall off. But can I just say, he's not that far off because osteoporosis is not a disease of calcium deficiency. It is a disease of disuse. So you must exercise to pound your bones, especially when you're young, especially when you're young, when you get to be, you get peak bone mass, like 40, 35, 40, but still important exercise every day and exercise with a Exercise with a, with a vest or do, make sure that you get some weight bearing exercise. So briskly walking, you know, for general health, we say, you know, we're happy with 150 minutes a week, which is really not much. But if you could do it a little bit more, even up to an hour a day, that would be fantastic if you could just walk. And if you can't walk outside, you can walk inside. I know people complain, well, the weather's bad, blah, 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 it's raining. So find a way to walk where you can walk in a mall or on a treadmill. Or I have an elliptical at home. Sometimes during a meeting, you can be, especially if you're just doing a Zoom meeting and you, they don't have to actually see you. Or yesterday I was on a meeting and they did see me, but you know, Gregor does it all the time. Michael Gregor, he's on his treadmill. So exercise, it'll help you to maintain your weight and it will decrease your risk of breast cancer and probably all cancers. And it will also, if you do more aerobic exercise, getting your heart rate up, it will also be good for your brain as well. 
And then lastly, so we talked about diet, we talked about maintaining a healthy weight, we, because we talked about um, exercise. Um, and now please, you must limit or avoid alcohol. And I know people do not like to hear this, but alcohol is a group one carcinogen. The World Health Organization said that it was this. And according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, it actually is contributing to about 5,000 extra breast cancers a year. 5,000, I think it's 5,000 extra deaths from breast cancer a year from alcohol. And, you know, I know that for, for heart disease risk, we say, well, you can have one glass of wine a day. But really, in terms of breast cancer risk or in terms of cancer risk, there may be no safe amount. So certainly even increasing, having even one serving of alcohol a day is going to increase your risk of breast cancer. And a little bit more about, about what, what alcohol does. So alcohol turns in your, in your mouth from your saliva into something called acetaldehyde. And so you know, even the alcohol in mouthwashes, I mean, you really should not be using, even swishing alcohol in your mouth. It's not a good thing to do on a regular basis. Alcohol is not healthy and it does increase your risk of breast cancer. Now people say, oh, but red wine is so healthy. So what is it about red wine? So there is something in red wine and it's in, it's actually not in the wine. It's not in the alcohol. It's in the grapes and it's actually in red grapes and it's in red grapes that actually have seeds. Not that you have to eat the seeds, but it's in the seed. You know, it's, it's actually a kind of aromatase inhibitor. There's something in these grapes that will help to prevent other hormones like androgens to be turned into estrogens. So what should you do? You can eat grapes, eat red grapes. But certainly when you're having white wine that's made from white grapes, you're not getting any of that benefit. And also the other benefit from red wine is resveratrol. And that is another antioxidant phytonutrient that also has cancer fighting properties. So red, red grapes are fantastic. And well, you know, grape juice, not, not bad at all. Fine. I might have more sugar because you're not getting the whole grape, but I would just eat the grapes. And you know, when the weather is warm, if you've ever had frozen grapes, have you ever had frozen grapes, Jean? Oh my God. Frozen grapes. Frozen grapes. Amazing. Oh my God. It's incredible. It sort of changes the whole the whole cellular structure of grape, and it just becomes almost like a like a sorbet in your mouth, right? Wait, wait, wait. So you add some of the grapes to your oatmeal, okay, and add a little bit of oat milk, and something happens around the oat milk, like the grape and or berries, and it just freezes the grape and the oat milk together, and it just like it's magic in your mouth. <laughs> so. This is what turns plant plant based people on. I know food, food. 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 all right, yay! Right. It's not bacon, but <laughs> but we feel the same. So frozen grapes, try them. But the the point is to to try to move away from drinking alcohol because it increases your risk of breast cancer. And there have been many studies looking at the Nurses Health Study and the Iowa Women's uh, Breast Cancer Project. There are all these different studies that show looking at populations that you can significantly reduce your risk of cancer and, and also reduce your risk of a recurrence if you can just stop drinking alcohol. Now, how can you draw, stop drinking alcohol? If you, re, if you really rely on alcohol to unwind or when you're stressed to sort of change the mood, like what can you do? What can you do? It's sort of like getting off of cigarettes, but it's one of these things that's so important. So Jean, do you have any ideas? Uh, I have in my basement, or actually it's in my garage, excuse me. It's a hot tub. And this is called a soft tub. And if you've never seen one of these, they're amazing, empty, they weigh 50 pounds, okay? And so you can pick it up and move it around. So like sometimes like in the summertime, I'll move it out like I, instead of having it in the garage where, you know, the, the humidity and whatnot, I'll take it out in the spring and leave it outside, you know, from spring, summer till fall, till it gets too cold. And then I'm bringing it inside again. So, but anyway, empty, it's like 50 pounds. And so you pick it up and I move it into the garage. And what's cool about the soft, it's called a soft tub. And what's cool about this is you, 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 it plugs into 110, just like a regular outlet, okay? Instead of having, because every traditional hot tub has to be rewired for 220. So, and it uses a significant amount of energy. Well, my electric bill goes up, I think, maybe $10 a 
$15 a month, that's it, because of the hot tub. So for me, it is my happy place. And I go down there and Calgon, take me away. <laughs> and, you know, I, I have a little TV down there, so I can turn the TV on and I can just chill in the hot tub. And that just, I mean, literally, literally, it de-stresses everything. You know, like after, as soon as you get into the hot tub, it's like, oh, oh my God, there is nothing better. Nothing right. better. Water, so, is, water is amazing for that. And yeah, I think no, for sure. you don't, I mean, we're lucky. We're lucky that and you're lucky that you have a hot tub and you have a garage and all of this. And some people don't, yeah. you know, might be living in smaller spaces. But if you have a bathtub, you know, just fixing yourself a nice bath and you can use bath salts and you can use a little bit of oil. Candles, so oil. the candles up and have it going therapy. and, you know, right. aromatherapy. Right. You know, put some, some essential oils in the bathtub you know, and you're breathing in all of this, make it a treat, right? Make it something that is special instead of just being a, you know, oh, I'm going to go take a shower tonight. No, take a bath. Right. And you can eat your frozen grapes. You can have your frozen grapes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or your favorite, or your favorite, you know, plant-based food in the bath. But also, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, this is the thing we talk about in coaching is you really have to, you have to think about the behavior and then why you might want to change it. And certainly, if you're worried about breast cancer, and I think most women are worried about breast cancer, or if you're worried about any kind of cancer, I mean, oral cancers are horrible, but you know, all these GI cancers and liver cancer, you just don't want to go down that road of getting, of using alcohol regularly and also using it sort of as a drug. And I think a lot of people do. I mean, right, mother, the, we, we do. I've had times, I remember in the past, I've had times where it's like, I need a drink after I met some weird person or something, you know, but you don't want to need a drink every day. And certainly when you're, when you're pregnant, absolutely not. There was one other thing I didn't mention about alcohol, but I want to, and I, and I, I didn't learn it from Dr. Gregor. I actually learned it from Christy, Christy Funk, Dr. Christy Funk, who has a wonderful book called Press, the owner's manual. <laughs> this is yes. a really good book. <laughs> a I book. got mine. Mine's back there too. I was reading right. it and it's an amazing book. Yes. So she talks about how one of, the, one of the things that's wrong with alcohol is that it interferes with producing folate in our bodies and absorbing folate. And if you have low levels of folate, you can also have increased, well, you can't repair DNA because the whole thing about folate is it gets turned into this active form of methylfolate. Folic acid also gets turned in, uh, into methylfolate. And if you know anything about epigenetics and turning genes on and repairing DNA, you need that methyl group. And that's what methylfolate does. It can donate a methyl group. So you really need folate. So she recommends that if you're, if you're drinking alcohol on a regular basis, then you really should be taking extra methylfolate. Now we're really not talking about the pregnancy advantage. We're just, because you do not drink if you're getting pregnant. Do not drink. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, everyone else, if you're gonna drink, then please be mindful of your folate. And we get folate from plants because it actually comes from the Greek, the whole thing about folate. And it comes from folium, which means leaf. So you get it from green leafy vegetables. You also have it in legumes. So folate. And she, Christy Funk recommends, Dr. Funk recommend, recommends if you're drinking alcohol, take some extra methyl folate in that form. So you don't have to, you don't have to make it into methyl folate. Take methyl folate about 600 micrograms a day. You know, and that's something that we recommend for pregnant women, although we recommend folic acid because that was what was used to reduce the risk of neural tube de defects um, in addition to a high folate diet. But she recommends that if you're drinking too. But I don't recommend that you drink. I don't know if I told you this or not, but I have this weird thing and I don't know why. And if anybody out there listening knows the answer to this, please share me. And maybe Deborah, you might know. But if I consume, and I'm not a big fan of alcohol. I never have been never will be and just it's just not something that i've never been fun it's never been fun for me any anyway but if i consume i remember having spaghetti sauce so anything with a red sauce and then like i had a half a beer half a beer my face just turned like the color of your shirt and i couldn't sit up i had to go lay down it was i was so hot like i felt like i had a fever Right. But I didn't have a fever, but my, my body was like burning up and, 
any time, like if I have like a lasagna that had red sauce in it or, you know, and had some wine with it, you know, back in the day, like, when, you know, when I was younger in my 20s and 30s, this would happen all the time. And it was only this combination of red wine right. and red sauce. It's, it's so interesting because it's very common to get this flushing from, from wine, from alcohol. Many people from Asian countries have it routinely and they have like an allergy to alcohol and they, they get very flushed. My father used to get very flushed from red wine, but I, the combination of just, because it didn't happen with just wine. It, it happened happen with just wine in combination wine. With, with a tomato, with vitamin C. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I have to, have to ask Christy Funk that. Maybe she knows. I don't yes, know. maybe she does. So thinking about other things. So I, it's good to sort of make out a menu of things that you can do easily that sort of are nourishing to you in a really positive way and wouldn't be taking anything away from you. I was even thinking, I mean, if you need, if you need to really change what's happening in your mind, a little meditation works a power nap of about 10 minutes, just really like lying down and chilling out, listening to some music, um, dancing, exercise. Yes, smile, what are you? Smiling. <laughs> Smiling will change your whole biochemistry. Yes, and laughter. Right. And laughter, watching watch a funny fun. movie. Right. I know. I know. If you watch, so like, turn on an old I Love Lucy. I mean, we're really dating ourselves. And there must be some. some. I gotta tell you something, though. I used to love, love watching I Love Lucy. Watched it all the time. And when Ricky would go Cuban, you know, yeah. and he would start rattling away. And I never understood. And then after I lived in South America, you know, for like, I don't know, five, ten years, and I was pretty fluent in Spanish. And I came home and I caught one of those episodes on I Love Lucy. Oh, and yeah. all of a sudden, it was like the light turned on and, you know, I understood everything Ricky was saying. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, I understood <laughs> what he's saying. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I digress. We are dating ourselves. So I turn on music sometimes. And I think if I, because we have that Alexa, you could just say, play this, you know, play the 60s, play the 70s, play the 80s. So, or any kind of song that will get you out of your head, any kind of memory smelling something that will bring back a wonderful memory. I have to say one thing. I don't know if you've thought about this because you have children, but I don't have children. But after growing up, I have some words of wisdom to people who are growing up and things that I wish that I had done. And maybe you have also some things that you wish that you had done. So one thing that I wish I had done is use more sunscreen. <laughs> So, because I definitely have some, you know, melasm discoloration on my arms too. And I, I traveled to India when I was young and I did not wear sunscreen ever. So please wear sunscreen from a very early age. And the other thing is how important your olfactory system is and how close that is to your, the, the memory center and, the, and, and all of this. So if, if you ever have, when you're young, a scent that you really love and you associate with something wonderful... I would get it on something and put it in a little glass jar or a plastic bag or something and keep it <laughs> because you can't, you can't get that back. I, I remember I, it's, kind of, it, it's not personal, but you know, love affairs or something with, there was a certain soap or there was a certain shampoo or there was a, a certain scent that was associated with it and, or a perfume that my dad got me when I was really, really young and I kept for a long time and then it sort of lost its smell. And I remember wanting to smell it and not being able to anymore. So, Please, if you're young and you're watching this, if there's something that's going on in your life and there's a smell that sort of you really love, make, get, it, get, a, get a sample of it and keep it if you can. Because one day in the future, it might be just something that'll bring back some really happy memories. And you know, it doesn't take away from anything that's going on now at all, but it's, I think that's fun. I, I, I kind of wish that I had had access to some, because I remember scouring through some of the some of the stores to remember, you know, what soap, what was that? And what shampoo was that? And they don't make them anymore. So anyway, is that kind of silly? No, because <laughs> my father used to use Menon's aftershave. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we would, you know, have to be in the bathroom because there was five of us, you know, five kids, two adults. So we were always in the bathrooms in and out. So I'm in there brushing my teeth and my father had just finished shaving and he's putting the aftershave on and he comes over and he's got the aftershave on his hands. And he comes over and goes like this to me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You just put aftershave on and I got to go to school. Are you kidding me? But, you know, and he would he'd laugh and we'd make fun. And, you know, it just became a teasing thing. So that smell mm -hmm. of 
what whatever was in men and after shade when i smell that it's like it brings back a fond memory of like right. my father you know and my right. mom having this little interaction in the bathroom on a daily basis you know because he'd always like you know after he did that once he'd come around and start chasing me and stuff like that so it was just a fun memory you know yes absolutely smell, smells are so powerful they're so powerful and they're your own you know we could talk about aromatherapy and the certain ones you know like right. that they have certain certain properties but your own the ones that mean something to you I think that's something to you know to maybe hold on to because it can bring it can bring you back. So you know, my mom used to use ginate. Okay. Do you, do yes. you remember ginate? Yes. There's a very yes. particular smell about that. And I think even my wife's mom also used ginate, so it was kind of funny. But I remember really holding on to some of the some of the perfumes that she used. Yeah. And I smell them. So my mom used Shalimar. She loved nice. Shalimar. <laughs> and and but here's the thing, and I'm gonna digress into this because you know, I have a bottle of it and every once in a while I'll smell it just mm -hmm. to smell that. And, and as soon as I smell it, it's like instantly I remember my mother. Yeah. You know? And it's just a, a wonderful thing. But here's the thing I'm going to say, because this is my, my biggest passion is toxins. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that they talk about is fragrances. They hide a lot of chemicals because they say, oh, it's proprietary information. Uh, excuse me. I can give that to an analytical chemist and I can tell you what's exactly in that in 10 seconds stop it you know but the, here's the real reason is because they will use the word fragrance then they hide a lot of chemicals in there like phthalates which are huge endocrine disruptors you know and things like for example if you are dealing with breast cancer you have to be uber or any kind of cancer you have to be so careful about the personal care products that you're using or the the cleaning products oh my god those are so bad so a good place that you can start is the ewg.org and i don't agree with everything in the way they rate things but it's a great place to start to get a good foundation because you want to make sure that you know that what you're putting on your body because literally in 26 seconds you put some cream on your body or shampoo or deodorant whatever 26 seconds it's in your bloodstream and a lot of these things these chemicals that were being put on on our bodies are going right into our bodies and they stay there they're it's called bioaccumulation and they stay there and the companies are like oh yeah but it's such a tiny amount okay a tiny amount over a big long period of like 50 years so you're using this stuff yeah it's going to accumulate and so here's one thing because people dealing with breast cancer do not want to have extra estrogen in their body okay so one of the chemicals, it's a chemical family called parabens, and anything with the ending of paraben, like there's methylparaben, butylparaben, propylparaben, it doesn't matter, they're all bad, okay? So if you see the ending with paraben on it, that is not something that you wanna use, because here's why. Your body thinks it's not, but your body treats it like estrogen. And if you're dealing with breast cancer, or any of the cancers around the reproductive system, you have to be so careful. Make sure, and they never tell you this. And it also has, you know, tamoxifen, they give tamoxifen to, for breast cancer. And then afterwards, they never tell you to not use things like parabens mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're, it, it won't respond the same way. The tamoxifen is not gonna work. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it, and they never tell you about this stuff. They don't tell you about diet. They don't tell you about like getting rid of the toxins. One of my clients had just had a double mastectomy and had gone through tamoxifen and it didn't work. And I got into her, you know, she hired me to help her, to coach her for food and whatever. And, it, and I came into her house and I'm like, no, you can't use this. You can't use this. You can't use this. You can't use this. And all of these personal care products. And I'm like, did they not tell you about this? And she's what like, they no, no. And I had some other, in oh my God, this was another one that makes me crazy absolutely crazy I, I went to go to the wellness dr robert otzfeld has a, a wellness program at the montefiore clinic and i was yeah. going to that program right. and you had to go and register just like you were going to see whatever so i'm in there and i'm literally in this room with like with, uh, like there had to have been a hundred people in the room waiting this is long before covid right and so there was like six little tables up there so i go to register and I, whoever was next, and I sat down, and I was giving my my insurance card, and you know all my information, and all this other stuff, and registering. 
And she looked up at me and I didn't say anything. I don't know. Do I have this face? I don't know. But she said to me, I'm a breast cancer survivor. Where do you go with that? You know what? I don't know why she chose to, yeah. to share that with me, but me being me, I'm like, have you changed your food? Have you changed it? You know, you got, you know, and she's like looking at me like deer in the headlights. And I'm like, really? No, nobody's talked to you about this. And she's like, no. And so no, on my way back them, out, they tell them it won't make a difference what you eat. They tell them it won't make a difference. You're making me crazy, Deborah. You're making me crazy. Don't get me, me don't make That's me any more crazy. That's the messenger. You go on. So what happened with this? <laughs> On the way back out, you know, I'm a huggy kind of person. And, you know, this COVID makes me crazy because I can't hug people anymore. But anyway, I'm a huggy kind of person. So I went up to her and said, you know, thank you, you know, for sharing your information with me. And I'm, I'm so glad you did. And if you need help, let me know. I'm glad to help you. And so I gave her a big hug. And as I'm hugging this woman, all I could do was smell the fabric softener. Mm. It was wafting off of her. And I said to her, after I gave her a big hug, and, and I pulled away from her, and I said, you have to do me a favor. And she says, what? I said, when you go home, I want you to go find fragrance-free laundry detergent, and I want you to wash all of your clothes and get rid, and then I want you to use that fabric softener, okay, for your dryer, those dryer sheets. I want you to take them outside. I want you to put them into the trash. I don't want them in your house anymore. I want you to take them out and put them in the dumpster, okay? And I want you to wash all your clothes. And she just looked at me like I was absolutely from Mars, you know? And I'm like, do you not know this? You're breathing in. And I had another incident. I was walking on the trail with my girlfriend. We go out walking every day. And the, we, were, we were strolling more on this day than power walking. <laughs> and this other couple was power walking and almost at a jog. We don't jog. <laughs> not unless there's a bear involved. So no, but anyway, we do power walk, but we weren't power walking that day. So anyway, the, so these people pass us and all I could smell for at least a quarter of a mile as, after they passed us was the, the smell, mm -hmm. the fabric softener. And you're breathing that in day in day and it's rubbing against your skin. You're absorbing it that way. You're breathing it that way. Stop it. We got, we have to make, so if you have, and if you're listening to this out there, please, 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 please find products that are not going to be toxic to you. If you need help, message me because I found a company that is, that meets my standards that is hundred percent toxic free. Okay. Without question. So if you need help, I can help guide you. So Excellent. anyway, okay. Yeah. I'm getting off my soapbox, you know. <laughs> Excellent. I was going to talk a little bit about dairy. If we had a moment, should we? We got a couple more minutes. Let's just try about talking about dairy because I know people are all worried about soy. We talked about soy last time and how helpful it is. So two whole soy products a day is going to help reduce your risk of, of breast cancer for a number of reasons. And you can go back to last week's uh, video if you want to hear that again. But let's talk about dairy. So is dairy healthy? Well, actually, milk contains biologically active female hormones. And these hormones are, they are going to sit, they're mammalian estrogens and progesterones and progestins, and they're going to sit in the growth promoting alpha receptors. Remember the breast has alpha receptors and beta receptors. Alpha receptors promote growth and that's where our estrogen, our own mammalian estrogen sits and that's where cow's estrogen sits and that's so the estrogen and progesterone in the milk gets concentrated in cheese. So high fat dairy intake is associated with a greater risk of breast and also prostate cancer. Animal, what else is wrong with cow's milk? Animal protein increases something called insulin-like growth factor one that promotes tumor growth. And it stimulates something called mTOR, the enzyme of aging. And cheese has saturated fat and cholesterol and it increases, that also increase breast cancer risk. So the cancer cells actually use cholesterol to make their own estrogen. Cow's milk is often contaminated, you might not have known this, but it's often contaminated with something called bovine leukemia virus, uh, BLV, bovine leukemia virus. And that might be responsible for up to 37% of breast cancers. They find bovine leukemia virus in it. And lastly, there is this other hormone called 5-alpha P or 5-alpha pregnenedione. Um, and this is another hormone present in milk, and it induces estrogen receptors in the breast cancer cells and makes them more, more sensitive to estrogen. That's also in cow's milk. So 
And this 5-alpha P is a direct precursor of dihydrotestosterone, which is associated with both, which is DHT, but associated with acne and prostate cancer. So I'm sorry, leave the cows, let the cows be. <laughs> There won't be so many of them because we actually make them have babies so we can have milk. So you don't have to worry about the world being overrun with cows because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But let the cows be and... It's not your milk. It's not your milk. You're drinking the lactating fluid of another species. And it's a species that grows to be 800 pounds. So really, right. how is that like us? So, you know, our milk, our milk, that our that our breasts produce is very species specific. I know there's some instances of, you know, cats feeding puppies and puppies feeding kittens and all that stuff, but it's a little different when you think about a human nur nursing off of this giant animal. <laughs> so the composition of the milk is completely different, completely yeah. different. Just look at the amount of- It should take a baby cow from 60 pounds at birth to 600 pounds in six months. Really? You right. think there's some stuff in there that's going to start feeding things to grow, like cancer? It's funny because people always think that we need so much protein, but actually human milk is some of the lowest amounts of protein, lowest percentage of protein of any other mammal's milk. So please don't, really don't get hung up on it. It's incredibly addictive. Cheese, that was one of the hardest things for me to get off too, but... You, you just need to break the habit. And now with Miyoko's and so many alternatives and you can make your own vegan cheese and you can do stuff with, with sweet potatoes and nutritional yeast and all kinds of yummy stuff. You yes. do not need milk from cows. You do not need that kind of, you do not need that, that cheese. So um, be healthy, eat healthy right. and have a little soy, eat your flax, maintain a healthy diet, exercise, don't drink alcohol, Please don't drink it very often at all. Leave it for special occasions, but eat your grapes. All right. All right, Deborah. We'll see you back next week, 2.30. All right. Bye. Thank you, Thank so you much. everyone. Bye-bye.